Welcome back to the Maximize Your Influence channel. Good to have you here. Just finished up a podcast on unlimited long-term motivation. For you and your prospect, it's the same. So go to MaximizeYourInfluence.com. That's a home of Influence University. That's the Advanced PhD Program in Persuasion and Influence. Now, let's talk about what we talked about on the podcast a little bit. We talked about goals. And it's not your goals. It's not your goal settings. It's your motivation. And I talked about the two motivators in life inspiration and desperation. Now there's some subsets to that, but the reality is you fail at your goals because you're using the same type of motivation. You need different type of motivations for different times, different hours, different days. Now here on this channel, what I want to do is supersize what I talked about. Talk a little bit more about your true motivation or your loser's limp. Now always hit subscribe, hit like, tell your family, friends, and enemies about this information. Really appreciate that. Go to MaximizeYourInfluence.com. But let's talk about those goals, and I know you're a little tense, you cringe a little bit, but there are three things that hinder goals. The first one is the wrong motivation. We talked about that on the podcast. Go listen to that on Spotify. You can do that on iTunes. Even go to MaximizeYourInfluence.com. The second one is no real why. Because people don't fail because of a lack of goals, they fail because of a lack of reasons behind those goals. I did some work with a gentleman named Dan Jansen, Olympian speed skater, does the, the oval track. Incredible story. Held the world record in this event. Went to his first Olympics, was going to win it all, and didn't even place. And so he trained for another four years, went back, got cut off, slipped and fell. Trained for another four years. Tragedy in his family, brain wasn't in it, didn't place. Trained for another four years. And if you're doing the math here, 16 years. He, he stuck to this goal to go to the Olympics, but his goal was the gold medal. And everyone's like, oh, don't worry about it. We know you're the best. It's, and this was the last time. This is getting too old. Last Olympics. Made it to the medal round, got cut off, slipped and fell, disqualified, no gold medal. <laughs> Not a great story. <laughs> well, let me finish it for you. So this year he went to the longer event. Wasn't his best event. Barely made it to the medal round. Gun went off. Incredible moment in Olympic history where not only broke the Olympic record, won the gold medal, victory lap with his newborn daughter. Everyone's crying. He had won the gold medal. And <laughs> so we sat down with him. We said, Dan, how do you stick to a goal for 16 years when most people can't even get out of bed in the morning? And he thought about it for a second. He says, you know, when I was younger, I had a wise coach that set me down before practice, before we started anything. And wrote down all his goals. Why won the gold medal? For me, family, financially. And he admitted he practiced six hours a day, six days a week. And almost every day after three, four hours, was cold, hungry, tired, wanted to go home. And when that happened, he'd pull that list of reasons from his speed suit and find something that would motivate him to get him back into the game. Finding that why. Then the third one, you got to be really very careful of what I want to focus on, is that loser's limp. A major cause of failure. Now, what's a loser's limp? It's your pre-excuse for failure. It's a sports term. To where I've seen this, I, I've run half marathons quite a bit. I mean, that's about my limit, and it stretches me, it really does. But you hear people talk ahead of time, well, you know, my knee's been hurting, and oh, my ankle, and I didn't eat very well, and I haven't trained as much as I should. So before the race even starts, they've given them an excuse why it's okay to fail. And when you give your excuse it's okay to fail, you're going to fail. In fact, Dr. Martin Salig, when he's the founder, one of the founders of positive psychology, says, that when you have this loser's limp, this pre-excuse for failure, it could trigger the following negative results. Disrupts the ability to learn from the situation, inhibits the ability to be creative, lowers the expectation for future successes, produces emotional disturbances like anxiety, hostility, fear, and depression, reduces the body's immune system, and limits earning capacity and decreases job security. Did you catch that? When you do this, all these negative results happen because you haven't taken ownership. You have all these excuses, people to blame. In fact, here's some excuses I hear all the time in the world of persuasion, influence, and sales. I can't cold call. They just got lucky. I have a bad territory. I tried it and it didn't work. I'm not good on the phone. The competition is everywhere. The product needs improvements. I'd be successful if I had that account. And of course, the company doesn't generate enough leads. You've heard these before. What's going on? You can't blame us because when you blame the company or the economy or others, you don't fix yourself. You give yourself why it's okay to fail. Take ownership where you are. This is a new year. Look at your goals. Look at the things we talked about. Get past your loser's limp and fix it. When, when you fix it and get past the blame, that's when magic happens in your life. 
That's when you're motivated. That's when you achieve your goals. That's when you persuade with power and you make the world a better place.